Let's talk about some summer releases together. There are a whole lot of really cool books coming out in July, August, and September. That does have me excited because I don't think I've been as interested in new releases this year as I have been in previous years. So the fact that this quarter, specifically September, I feel like there's a lot of good books coming in. Also, don't get kittens. They keep you up all night long and coffee becomes very, very necessary, even though it was already necessary. I'm sorry that you can probably hear them running around. Look at this cute little boy. Go, get her, get her. Starting off on July 2nd, we have Reckless, which is the sequel to Powerless, which was one of my best books of last year. So I am really excited about this one. The end of Powerless has me eyeball emojiing so hard. Like my eyes are like, woo. I needed this right after Powerless and I still need it. I still need to consume it ASAP. So it will be something I think I might get to as soon as it's released. In the first book, Powerless, we're following our main character, Peyton, who is powerless in a world where if you are powerless, you were seen as a disease and you are murdered off. The king does not like the powerless. He thinks they're a threat to his society, his elite ruling. Peyton ends up becoming chosen to be in this trial that gives you glory and money if you win it. Now, it's not necessarily a fight to the death, but killing people is allowed within this trial. Peyton is powerless, but she can't let anyone know that she's powerless. How is she going to survive this trial? Well, she seems to befriend Kai, but Kai does all the killing for the king of the powerless people. It's Hunger Games meets Red Queen and it's so full of banter, it's a fun time read. Now we're moving on to July 9th and there are a few releases on July 9th. The first one is The Family Experiment, which I actually talked about in my last quarterly release video. This is a US only release. It was already released in June, I believe, for the UK. I've actually already read this book. I enjoyed it. I just realized I have my AirPods in. I'm gonna take those out. There's no need for them to be in. This follows a world where overpopulation has become a really big issue and having a kid is way too expensive now for most people. So virtual babies have become a thing and we're following 10 families as they compete in a reality TV show to raise a virtual child over a year span from birth to adulthood. And at the end of this year, the public will vote on who they liked the best and that family will win a bunch of money or their virtual baby will get to stay alive. The conversations on AI in this were really cool. So I definitely would recommend, John Mars can write a really good sci-fi thriller. So I definitely would suggest checking out his work, if not this one, but other things, but this was interesting. Also on the ninth, we have The Sky on Fire by Jen Lyons. Jen Lyons wrote the Course of Dragons series, which which I liked the first few books in didn't love the rest, but I'm still really excited for this. I believe this is a standalone and also has dragons in it. And I do love a dragon story. This says it's Dragon Riders of Pern for a modern audience. And I enjoy Dragon Riders of Pern. The first book I read in that series, I gave five stars. Enter a world ruled by dragons. We're following our main character, Anarod. I don't know how to say that. Who has a bonded Titan Drake, I think. And she prefers to live deep in the jungles, but someone saves her from capture from a warlord. But I think she ends up making a deal with her freedom because her past has caught up with her when these people rescue her and they want her to go into the cloud city that is ruled by dragons and steal from the dragon's horde. I'm intrigued. Wait, this is giving me like Hobbit vibes, you know, like stealing from the dragon. And I love that scene in The Hobbit, both in the book and in the movie. It's like the only thing about that book that I liked. The horde in question also wants her dead. So it sounds like there are some high stakes in this one and I appreciate high stakes. This also says fans of Naomi Novik's Temera series and Rebecca Yar's The Fourth Wing will enjoy this page turning adventure. Now those are books on the opposite spectrum in my opinion. However, they both have like dragons that talk. So like I'm assuming this has dragons that talk in it. I'm really excited about this one. I think it's gonna be really good. Also on July 9th, we have The Half King by Melissa Landers. I think this is a Red Tower book. So it's got pretty sprayed edges <laughs> and a pretty sprayed edge gets us all. I know us all, we all love them. There's not a lot about this book. It says Beauty and the Beast meets the Sandman in a scorching hot new adult fantasy in a world where every firstborn child of the noble house bears a curse. That sounds interesting. And only one heretic cult might hold the answers to breaking them. That's literally all that's on Goodreads. So not a lot going on this one, but something about it calls to me and it could be the edges. It could be the crack that was in Fourth Wing that makes me just want to pick up every single Red Tower book, hoping that they also put crack in them. But either way, I'm excited. 
that's actually all I have for July, so we're gonna move on to August. And on August 2nd, we have the fifth and final book in the Married to Magic series by Elise Kova that's supposed to come out. This one is called Dawn with the Wolf Knight. The Married to Magic series is a series of standalone set within the same world. You can read them in any order. They essentially have a world with different fae creatures, or I shouldn't say fae creatures, because fae is one of them, but like there's a fae one, a vampire one, an elf one, a siren one, and now a werewolf one. It's essentially arranged marriages to help free the kingdom of something that is holding their magic back that we watch every single time. This one says a grown-up Little Red Riding Hood meets werewolves and witches in a standalone adult fantasy romance. To enter the woods as a human means death, but I am no mere human. They call me witch. There's something I find really fun about Elise Kova and her writing style, so I'm really excited for this one. I've read two books within this series of standalones. The vampire one, which I loved, and the elf one, which I felt was mediocre. So I'm excited to continue and try more. On August 13th, we have Ghostsmith by Nikki Pau Pareto. This is the sequel to Bonesmith. I'm excited for this one because it's a duology, so this is the end of the series. I actually read Bonesmith earlier this month. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I'm intrigued to continue. It feels like a little bit of a younger YA than I typically enjoy, but the magic system in this was so interesting that I need to see how it all plays out and progresses within the rest of the series. And I also think they have the coolest covers. Bonesmith essentially follows our main character, Ren, who is training to be a Valkyr, which is essentially a type of bonesmith who defends the other bonesmith. They learn how to attack the ghosts because in this world, if people aren't given proper burials, their ghosts come out to haunt society. So bonesmiths come and they bury the bones or disconnect the ghosts from the bones so that they can move on properly. The ghosts don't want to have this happen to them and so they attack whoever tries to do that. So there's two types of bonesmiths, one who defends the other one and one who searches for the bones and she is training to be the soldier one, the one that's defending and fighting them. However, when she fails her test, she's sent out to the real world to be a soldier. She makes friends with the prince and when the prince goes missing, she knows she she is the only one who can save him. However, she can't do it alone. She does it with a man that she never thought she'd partner with, an ironsmith. Long thought to be dead, long thought to be non-existent, her greatest enemy, but now her greatest ally. If you're looking for just like a fun, easy read with like cool world building and magic systems, definitely pick this one up. I really liked the magic system. On August 20th, we have Clown in a Cornfield 3, The Church of Frendo. I have given both of the other books in this series five stars. I love Clown in a Cornfield. They are such fun YA slashers for me with like deep politics to them as well. Like they aren't just your average run of the mill slasher watch all the kills. There is like a really deep conversation and discussion and nuance about society within these, which I really enjoy. We get to see how our characters really react in these situations. Cloud and Cornfield is a slasher. I feel like I don't need to tell you anything else. It's a slasher. And I really, really enjoyed both one and two. One is definitely better than two, but I still enjoyed two. However, the fact that it says the church of Frendo, are we gonna have a Frendo cult? A slasher cult happening in this? Because if we do, call me intrigued. I honestly think we might be in the season of dragons. There's a whole lot of dragon books coming out. I think Fourth Wing really spiked some more dragon love. Dragons have always been popular, but so many people I know talked about how much they loved the dragons in Fourth Wing, and now I'm seeing so many dragon books being released. I really think that there's a push for dragons currently within the book sphere, and I'm 100% okay with it. On August 27th, we have Between Dragons and Their Wrath by Devin Madsen. Devin Madsen, you might already have heard of because she wrote We Ride the Storm, which I have not read. I probably should fix that, but I'm really excited for this one. This says a rip-roaring epic fantasy full of dragons, alchemical magic, I love alchemical magic and forbidden romance that unfolds as three people, three, not two, in a shattered empire become entangled in a looming revolution. A revolution. There are so many buzzwords in just that like line for me. Epic fantasy, dragons, alchemical magic, forbidden romance, revolution, my favorite things. Essentially, this follows a world that has been split into city-states, but there are those who seek to reunite the Shattered Realm, and we're gonna follow three characters whose destinies become entangled as we figure out what they're doing and how to fix these Shattered Realms. Tesha is a glassblower's apprentice who becomes a tribute bride when her city is conquered by the South. In the enemy's court, she's perfectly placed to sabotage them, but her heart has other plans. I like 
glass blowing in books. I've only read it in one other book, Flame and Sparrow, and I just think it's such a cool little hobby. <laughs> and Natalie is laundress in the house of a centric alchemist who is awakening to strange new powers. When radicals approach her, she faces a choice between keeping her magic to herself and using it to change the world. I already think I'm gonna love her POV. That sounds really interesting. And in the desolate Shield Mountains, Dragon Rider Ash, love me a Dragon Rider, protects the cities from the monsters in the Lapio Sands beyond. But soon, 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 he'll have to learn how to protect his dragon when hunters unlock the secret to killing them. No, don't kill my dragons. As war sweeps across the lands, Tesha, Nali, and Ash must fight for survival against political enemies, dragon hunters, and monsters. That sounds really good. Every time I read a synopsis that I've already read, I get like reinvigorated that I want to read it. Like, does that happen? Like, I forget what a book is about, and then I reread the synopsis, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's why it's on this list. We're moving on to the big boy month. September. September 3rd has three releases and three that I'm dying for. The first one is The Game's God's Play. Now I talked about this in my Apollycon TBR that recently went up. It's another Red Tower book, another Sprayed Edge, another book I'm hoping is filled with the same crack Fourth Wing had. It says Percy Jackson for adults meets Hunger Games with a slow burn romance between a contestant and Hades himself. Call me intrigued. <laughs> in this one, every hundred years, the gods have a competition to see who's going to be the next ruler. And they do that by selecting a human to be their contestant champion. This year, Hades shocks the world by choosing someone that no one would expect. In this modern mythic romanticy, she fights for her life for the god of death. I'm really intrigued. I don't know, like Hades? competition, romance. I'm intrigued. It kind of gives me Pond's Gambit vibes, but romanticy? What more can I ask for? Next up, we have Immortal Dark by Tigest Gurma. The Cruel Prince meets Ninth House in this dangerously romantic dark academia fantasy. Okay, I know that these are never one for ones, but they always get me with comparison games. Like, always. <laughs> I haven't even read The Cruel Prince, but like, sure. I think I'm gonna love The Cruel Prince, so I'm probably gonna love this one, and I like Ninth House, so like, let's have a baby. Sure. Where a lost heiress must infiltrate an arcane society and live with the vampire she suspects killed her family and kidnapped her sister. Vampires. Buzzword. Mi casa, su casa. Maybe I will plot to kill you. You know? It began long before my time, but something has always hunted our family. Orphaned heiress Kaiden Adain grew up from the arcane society she was born into where human bloodlines gain power through vampire companionship. Wait, that's kind of new. When her sister June disappears, Kaiden is convinced a vampire stole her. The very vampire bound to their family. The cruel yet captivating Susenyos Sagad? I'm butchering these. To find June, Kaiden must infiltrate the elite Uxley University. I don't like that name. <laughs> where students study to ensure peaceful coexistence between humans and vampires and inherit their family legacies. Peaceful between humans and vampires? Don't they know they're blood-sucking creatures? Kaiden must survive living with Susanyos even as he does everything he can to drive her away. It doesn't matter that Susanyos' wickedness speaks to Kaiden's own violent nature and tempts her to surrender to a life of darkness. She must find her sister and kill Susanyos at any cost. When a murder mirroring June's disappearance shakes Uxley, Kaiden sinks further into the ruthless underworld of vampires, risking her very soul. Hmm. There she discovers a centuries-old threat, and June could be at the center of it. To save her sister, Kaiden must bring Uxley to its knees and either break free from the horrors of her own actions or embrace the dark entanglements of love and the blood it requires. I was waiting for blood to be mentioned in this. I honestly love this cover, though. Like, elite cover. I'm very intrigued. I always want more vampire books. I think this is a cool take on vampires. It's got the secret society, so a little bit dark academia themed. I'm really, really intrigued by this one. Also on September 3rd, we have The Gods Below by Andrea Stewart. Andrea Stewart wrote The Bone Shard Daughter and that trilogy, and I really liked the first book in that series. We don't need to talk about the rest, but the first book was such an incredible read for me, and I loved the world building and the magic system that this series had. So I am still really excited to try more from this author. I am a book person, a story person over an author person. There's never been an author that I love every single series from. I really have to enjoy that story. It's not about like the writing as much for me. And there's authors that I've hated things from and loved other things from. So still excited to try this one out. This series is set in a world ravaged by ancient magic where precious gemstones bestow magical abilities on the few individuals able to harness their power. I love magic systems like that where it's like an object or an item that gives them powers. It's kind of why I like like ingestion magic and alchemical magic. It kind of gives me Mistborn or Along the Razor's Edge vibes where like not everyone can use magic. And 
you can't just use it without these items. It's full of clandestine power struggles and the battle between gods. The story follows Hakera, a young woman searching for her missing sister and who will do anything to find her, even lead a rebellion against the gods themselves. Meddling gods and rebellion, more buzzwords for me. Also siblings, I love sibling stories. There seems to be a lot of missing sisters coming out in this quarter, but I'm really intrigued by this one. I'm excited to see what Andrea Stewart is bringing to us. And the cover is really interesting with like the two snakes and like the glow. I'm really intrigued. On September 10th, we have three more books. Two I'm really excited for, one that I'm throwing on here as a might read, but not as excited for. Let's start with the excited for ones. We have So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison, another vampire book. I also think we're in a vampire era again. I feel like Faye was in and it still is in. Like Faye will never go out, but like, you know, back once upon a time, I feel like we had like witches and then vampires and then werewolves were in and then we went back to Faye and then witches. And I feel like we just circled through like what is popular constantly and I think we're back in like vampire time which I do think means that werewolves are coming but for now because I'm a vampire girly at heart always have been love me a vampire story. I blame Twilight and House of Night. I think we're in the vampire, vampire phase. I don't know where I was going with that. Now this one is a horror story so it's not like a romanticy vampire story. I like both takes of vampire stories. I truly just love vampires. Rachel Harrison is an author that I have read and loved before and read and not liked before and I'm excited to see with this new book if it'll be for me or not. She has a bit of a quirkier writing style but it is a lot slower and more like literary literary fiction horror at times, so it really depends on the story, I think. A woman must learn to take life by the throat after a night out leads to irrevocable changes in this juicy, thrilling novel. Sloane Parker is dreading her birthday. Don't we all? Just kidding, I actually like my birthday. She doesn't need a reminder she's getting older or that she feels indifferent about her own life. Her husband surprises her with a birthday weekend getaway. Oh, people who don't like their birthdays don't like surprises. Not with him, but with Sloane's long time best friend troublemaker extraordinaire, Naomi. Ooh, they're gonna get into some trouble. Sloane anticipates a weekend of wine tasting and cozy robes and strategic avoidance of issues she'd rather not confront, like her husband's repeated infidelity. Girl, you should deal with that. Get out of there. Red flag waving here. But when they arrive at their rental cottage, it becomes clear Naomi has something else in mind. She wants Sloane to stop letting things happen to her for Sloane to really live. That's a good best friend. So Naomi orchestrates a wild night out with a group of mysterious strangers only for it to take a horrifying turn that changes Sloane's and Naomi's life literally forever. The friends are forced to come to terms with some pretty eternal consequences in this bloody seductive novel about how it's never too late to find satisfaction even though it might taste different than expected. Even the synopsis is funny. Her writing is really quirky and funny to me and I hope she sucks that cheating husband's blood right out of him. Next up we have The Scarlet Throne by Amy Leoy. There's a cat on this cover. <laughs> I'm just sneering at it. It's so cute. Oh my god. I think it's like a puma or something, but it's fucking adorable. This is a dark, heart-thumping, political epic fantasy. I love a good political book by debut author Amy Leoy. I'm intrigued. Hard to find some good debuts sometimes, so I'm really excited for this one. Full of scheming demons, buzzword, morally gray heroines, talking cats, and cutthroat pirates. Oh, that says priests, not pirates. My bad. Cutthroat priests. I can't read. This delicious tale of power and corruption will captivate from beginning to end. Binsa is a living goddess chosen by the gods to dispense- wait, how is she a living goddess chosen by the gods? To dispense both mercy and punishment from her place on the scarlet throne but her reign hides a deadly secret. Rather than channeling the wisdom of an immortal deity, she harbors a demon. That's hilarious. But now her priests are growing suspicious when a new girl, Meta, is selected to take over her position. Vinsa and her demon strike a deal to magnify his power and help her wrest control from the priests. She will sacrifice human lives. She'll do anything not to end up back on the streets forgotten and alone. But how much of her humanity is she willing to trade in her quest for power? Deals with demons are rarely so simple. That sounds so good. And there's talking cats. I hope the demon is the talking cat because a cat is kind of a demon already. Okay, and then the one I'm not as excited about for this date is Vilest Things by Chloe Gong. This is the sequel to Immortal Longings, which I didn't like, so I don't know why I'm thinking about reading the sequel. I think I gave the first book two stars, but the sequel does come out on the 10th, and I'm curious. So if it gets good reviews, 
I might try it. It read quickly at least. It has so much potential, so I'm intrigued by the sequel. September 24th, I have The Wraith King by Juliet Cross, another one I talked about in my Apollocon TBR recently. We're really excited about. I'm obsessed with this cover. This cover is stunning, incredible, everything you could ever want. I lost the cat. It's scary when you lose them. It's literally everything you could ever want, in my opinion. <laughs> like, what? This follows a world where there's a war between the ruthless Wraith King and the Light Fae. The Wraith King is asking for one thing to end this war. Princess of Isos, Una Hearthstone, must marry him to end this war once and for all. And Galea Verbane, who I think is the Wraith King, is determined to fill his destiny and the God's prophecy. With his seer points to the Princess of Isos as the key to rise of the Dark Fae, he demands her submission. When she finally yields, he realizes Una is much more to him than a priceless weapon. Men, they always think we're just items until they learn that we're incredible, amazing, they can't live without us. A mystery that has haunted Una for years awakens when she is abducted and dragged back to Nachtmere. The palace hides many dark secrets. What palace doesn't? And at least one traitor. Again, what palace doesn't? A traitor determined to take King Gull's throne and all he possesses. What he doesn't know is that Una's magic is more powerful than he can imagine. And that Gull, the Wraith King, will burn the whole world to savor. I love Oh, I love a male MC who will burn the world down for her. Chef's Kiss, incredible when it's done right. Those are like the set ones I have, but I have a few that are a little bit up in the air. Indie, fan row, it's a little bit hard because they push dates back a lot. Burn of the Everflame, which is the fourth book in the Kindred Curse Saga, which starts with Spark of the Everflame, is one I'm waiting for, and I think it will come out in the next three months. I think the date for it right now is July 30th. However, that could get pushed back or could be faster. The author is finishing things up, but she's not sure when it will 100% be done anymore. It was supposed to be done for June, but it wasn't. I appreciate that authors have the ability to push their books back and make them 100% brilliant and amazing for us in the indie sphere, but when making releases like this, it can be like harder to talk about and I want to talk about this one still. I'm really excited about this ending. I think Spark of the Everflame is like the next big fan row. Like read it if you haven't. Book one was really mid for me but books two and three were five stars out of this world. I'm on a spaceship flying to wherever these are so that I can be with Luther. <laughs> Fuck DM. Give me my man. Ash and Feather which is the sequel to Flame and Sparrow by SM Gaither also has been pushed back a few times so I'm not sure when it's coming out but I am really excited for that one. It is a duology so it is the end ending and I can't wait. Like it's an exciting end for me. I loved book one and so I want more people to read it. I think the god of fire, <laughs> just look at his little tail. I think the god of fire is something so fun to read. I think his friends and the banter in that book were really amazing so I'm really looking forward to this final in the duology. And then Shadow and Storms by Helen Shewer, which is the fourth book in the Legend of Thesmar series, I think is set to come out on June 20th. I just don't trust these anymore so I'm gonna throw it in here. If it's already out on June 20th, well it's already out but then you can go get it. I've been really enjoying this series as it goes on. I think that there's a really cool fantasy aspect of it. I like Wilder Hawthorne who is our male protagonist. Thea, a little so-so sometimes but I'm really excited for the fourth book after what happened in the third book. I think the third book was all the progression in the fantasy and the plot that I needed that the second book didn't give me so I'm excited for book four. The second book in the Veiled Kingdom series, The Hunted Heir, also just got pushed back but it should be coming out in the next coming months and I'm really excited about this one. And then The Hunter's Gambit is set to release June 25th. This is not an indie book I don't think so it will be released on June 25th but I wanted to throw it in here anyways because I'm excited for it and it's fun to talk about these things. This says it comes a tale of seduction, sadism, and survival featuring malevolent vampires and a locked room escape adventure. Perfect for fans of Empire the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. I'm unsure about this tagline but it has me really intrigued. Locked in a castle with a clan of devious vampires, one woman is caught in a literal fight for her life. Okay yeah, it makes sense. I'm sold. I take it back. Vampires have always fascinated Kazan Korvik so much that she's made it her life's work to craft weapons designed solely to kill them. But when she's attacked and captured by an entire clan, Kazan's fascination turns ferocious. In their citadel, Kazan is forced to attend the vampire court where she must act as their queen. She is told that she will be waited and doted upon until the end of her reign in three days time. Then an extravagant and lavish feast will be held where the vampires will consume their newly crowned queen. <laughs> 
Oh god, this poor lady. At least you got to be queen for three days. Make them do whatever you want. Desperate and afraid, Kazan finds no allies in the castle except for a pair of distractingly alluring vampires who seem sympathetic to her plight. But as she devises her escape plan, she comes to realize that she is not the only one who is trapped and no one is prepared for how far she will go to survive. Like literally, doesn't that sound good? I'm sold, like that sounds so good. And I told you vampires were in so many vampire books and so many kidnapping books. The trends, the trends are trending. If you're interested in hearing about last quarter's releases, I know they're already out, but that doesn't mean you have read them and maybe you're intrigued to find some new books to read. I'll leave that video on the screen for you. I'd love to know some releases you're excited about down below and have yourselves an absolute Absolutely remarkable day.